Hey, we're back. Uh, we're looking at ticker symbol XLI. And this uh, ETF focuses on the industrial sector. Uh, we currently have the one month uh, chart on the screen on Yahoo's version. Uh, so currently it's at 97, which the last time we looked at this was around March 19th. It was trading at 96. So I'm just gonna update that to 97. We did have a buy point marked out at 96. So we're still right there within range. And I didn't have a resistance point uh, noting that there was a long-term uptrend. So we'll kind of, we'll, we'll look at the technical analysis very, very soon. Uh, there's no news really to cover for this one uh, during that time period. Uh, but before we get into the technicals, let's just remind ourselves of the top holdings in this so we can see uh, this ETF has about 95, 96% in the industrial market, a little bit in tech and a little in consumer, but just like we want to see, it's virtually all in industrials. It seems to also have a very good spread throughout its uh, companies that are withheld in this ETF. Uh, nothing is over 5%. It looks like the top 10 make up about 40% uh, with the highest holding here. I'm seeing Raytheon is at a nearly 5% at 4.81. Uh, we have BA, I believe that's Boeing. And we have HON, I'm not too familiar with them. Uh, we can open that real quick. Uh, we also have let me just put this on mute just in case. Uh, we also have UPS at 4.75, uh, Caterpillar, General Electric, a uh, handful. So it's Honeywell. Honeywell is HON. But yeah, so it's very spread out. And um, again, so not much news. Let's just jump into the technicals here. So we do have these purple lines marked out showing the long-term uptrend. If we zoom out, you can kind of see what I'm referring to. Uh, hopefully this isn't too small, but going back to about 2019, that's when we first noticed that this uptrend is happening. And so if we zoom in a little bit, just to go into more of the details, you can see we're, we're trying to catch most of the bars. There's some instances in the early years where it does go above, hardly any goes below. As you get more recent towards 2016, you can see it was actually hitting below that trend line, but still, you know, trending upwards. Uh, there was this big dip, but like I said, trending back upwards again. A uh, little bit above, a little bit below. The crash in 2020, but uh, within about nine months, it was back within the uptrend. More recently, between 21 and 22, it was way above the uptrend. And so that's why it makes sense that it pulled back the way it did uh, between first quarter of 22 and second quarter of 22 it, it really pulled back almost overcorrected a little bit but right now again it seems like we're right in that uptrend range so uh, this one seems fairly priced at least and if we zoom in you can kind of see it looks like we're sideways consolidating here uh, for the most part, it seems to be between this range of this green line, which is our buy point of 96, and this black line, which seems to be the peak, at least in the uh, prior short term, which goes back to about 2021, of 105. So we're, we're trading between that range. We do have some dips here, which I'm, I have to imagine that's behind us now. Uh, ultimately, we could see a pullback to, you know, 90. That would still keep us in that up range. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. Uh, but again, it does seem like we're trading sideways. And so looking ahead, I kind of think what will happen is we'll just kind of keep trading uh, between that mark. Uh, if it goes below the green line, I think that would be a great time to buy. Uh, right now, I do think is a fair time. Uh, in terms of resistance, since I don't have anything currently, 
uh, I guess, in fact, we could even pull this down a little bit to about 104. Uh, probably, if we just bring it down even further, about 103 seems to be a point of interest to us. And then we'll add in the horizontal line up here and we'll make this one black because that seems to be the all-time high at the moment. Uh, I do think the uptrend will continue, uh, so that's why, I guess just for the short term, I will put, it might struggle at 103, and you can even see most recently on week ending 310 that it did touch 103 and rejected very quickly, falling all the way down to about 96, bouncing back. I, again, we'll kind of see how this plays out. Uh, in terms of like a prediction, like if I were to kind of draw something out, uh, what I think could happen, and again, this is just kind of making stuff up, since we're right here currently, I think, I think we could see something like this, uh, maybe, maybe exceed that point, pull back a little bit maybe to here, maybe come back up somewhere, maybe not as rapidly, maybe come out here and um, trend downward again to something like this, maybe come back up, down, you, you know, something like that. Uh, and again, I'm just making stuff up. I mean, it could be, we could see this pull down further and I would be okay with that. Um, maybe even this would, this could potentially come down. This would then come up. Let's pull this down a little bit. Still showing a, a little bit of an uptrend. Something like that. I think that's reasonable. Um, but of course, it seems like 96 is acting as a support line. So we might not see this, but again, we might see something like that where one of these points just dips below. I don't think we'll see multiple times, but uh, again, just to kind of keep an uptrend, the long-term uptrend, that's just kind of, that's just kind of what I'm seeing right now. Um, yeah, I don't want to keep going in circles, so uh, that's how I'm seeing it right now. We'll, of course, continue to watch this. Overall, nothing's really changed. Uh, just trying to forecast here. Um, I did insert this resistance point at 103, which I think by the end of the year, we're probably going to exceed that, and uh, I won't be surprised about that. Um, that's pretty much all we changed. And then, of course, we added in a possible prediction, which I think this one's going to be... Pr I don't have much faith in this one. I think when we circle back to it, I'll have a a little bit clearer picture of how I think it could go but for now yeah I just kind of drew something in showing that we could see a pattern like this and it would still stay within a consolidation we'd still be within that uptrend and that's really the point I'm trying to convey here is that's something that could happen and it would be okay I also think we'd be okay if you know it pulled all the way back into the low 90s I think we would still keep that uptrend and, um, <clears throat> you know, we'll just see how it plays out. I think, again, one of these dips, I think, in the future uh, will cross that green line, maybe just for a day or two. Uh, hopefully we can catch it. If not, uh, there's a good chance I'll just buy probably Monday morning just because it's within a decent range, and I love the long-term uptrend. But let me know what your thoughts are. I'd be happy to hear that. If I missed news, by all means, share that in the comments. I'd love to hear that too. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the the summary right here on our spreadsheet. So XLI is currently at 97. I have that buy point of 96. I think we're running to some resistance at 103. And it's in a long-term uptrend. I think what I'll also do is... Uh, Adam mentioned that it's console... The dating between 
uh, 96 and 103. Uh, so pretty small range, in all honesty. That's pretty good. Uh, so no like terrible times to buy. But yeah, uh, again, let me know your thoughts. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.